In the previous video in this series, I showed you how to download and install GNS3 on a Windows 10 computer. Now that we've got GNS3 installed, let's start it up and create our first GNS3 topology. When GNS3 starts up, for the first time, we see the setup wizard. I'm not gonna use this wizard, so I'm gonna click cancel. The GNS3 software now starts up, and as we can see here, it successfully started. I'm gonna click File, New Blank Project to start my first GNS3 project. So call this anything you want. My project files are by default stored here. You can change the location of the files if you want to. Click OK. The GNS3 GUI consists of various components. On the left hand side, we can browse for various devices in our GNS3 topology. As an example, if I click Browse Routers, I can see Available Appliances, Installed Appliances, and Installed and Available Appliances. By default, no appliances are installed, but I can install various appliances from the GNS3 Marketplace by simply dragging them to the workspace in GNS3. This white area is called the GNS3 Workspace. I can also look at various switches. By default, I have an ATM switch, Ethernet hub, Ethernet switch, and frame relay switch installed, but various other switches are available. Under end devices, I have a cloud, NAT cloud, and VPCS installed by default, but again, there are many end devices available from the GNS3 marketplace. I can also browse security devices. By default, no security appliances are installed, but many are available, including the Cisco ASAV. Browse all devices shows me all devices that are available. At the moment, these are the devices that I have installed, but as you can see here, there is a long list of devices that can be installed in GNS3. So I'm gonna to go to installed devices, and to start off with, I'm gonna create a very basic GNS3 topology consisting of one ethernet switch and two VPCS devices. VPCS devices are very basic PCs that you can use to test your GNS3 installation. The add a link button allows you to add connections to your GNS3 topology. I'm then gonna add a link from the VPCS devices to the ethernet switch. In subsequent videos, I'll show you how to add a Cisco iOS image to your GNS3 topologies, but initially, all I wanna do is test that GNS3 is installed correctly. You can move devices around in your topology. You can show interface labels. You can also add various notes to your topology to make it look nicer. So move things around and change the look and feel as you like. As an example, you could go to Edit, Preferences, and change the style of your GNS3 topology. Some screenshots that you see on the internet may look like this. Windows by default uses the classic GNS3 style, which looks like this. Now in subsequent videos, I'll show you how to create more complex GNS3 topologies. But initially, all we wanna do here is prove that GNS3 has installed properly and that you can get GNS3 working on your computer using a basic GNS3 topology. What I'm gonna do now is start up the devices in my GNS3 topology and open up consoles to the devices. Now, even though the ethernet switch has a console, we're not going to initially configure that. So what I'm gonna do is do some basic configuration on my VPCS PCs. 
To make this easier to read, I'm going to change the PuTTY settings. So I'll make this bigger so that it's easier to read. So here's PC1. And I'll do something similar on PC2. Change the appearance of the console. Okay, so PC1, PC2. On PC1, I'll configure an IP address of 10.1.1.1 with a slash 24 mask. I'll do something similar on PC2, IP address 10.1.1.2 slash 24 mask. Now that that's been done, I should be able to ping from one PC to the other. So on PC2, can I ping PC1? The answer is yes, I can. On PC1, can I ping PC2? Yes, I can. So I've proven now that Genus3 has installed successfully. I can start it up and create a project, add devices to my Genus3 topology, configure them and get them to talk to one another. That's the first thing you want to do when you install Genus3 for the first time. Just prove that a basic install of Genus3 works. Once you've done this, you can extend your Genus3 topologies. I'll drag a third PC to the topology and connect it to the Ethernet switch. I'll right click on the device and click Start to start it up. Right click, click Console to open up a console to the PC. I'll change the console settings and I'll configure this PC with an IP address of 10.1.1.3 slash 24 mask. And let's verify whether it can ping PC1. It can. What about PC2? It can. So I've proven that Genus3 now works. What I should do is save my device configuration. So I'm going to type save on the VPCS devices, and I'm gonna turn off my Genus3 topology. And then I'm gonna close Genus3. So once you've finished using Genus3, you can close it down and close the PuTTY windows. If tomorrow or at a later date you want to reopen that GNS3 topology, simply start a GNS3 and open your GNS3 project. If you don't want this window to show up every time you start GNS3, click Don't Show this window again. I'm going to go to File, Open Project, and select my first GNS3 project and click Open. GNS3 now opens my Genus3 topology, I can start the devices up and open up consoles to the devices. So here are my three PCs. On PC1, I should be able to ping PC2, which I can, and I should be able to ping PC3. So in other words, Genus3 has successfully restored my Genus3 topology. Don't forget to save your device configurations. Genus3 doesn't save device configurations. It will save the Genus3 topology, but not the individual device configurations. So before you shut down and exit Genus3, make sure that you save your device configurations. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wanna wish you all the very best.